Hey folks, it's Charles here, the popular inventor of the BioBlaster ozone generator and the new Bio3 VHP ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide technology. And today I'm here in southern Ohio with a friend of mine, Eric Schmidt of Bioshock Surface and Air Sterilization Technologies. And Eric has been running his own successful business using ozone and ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide for the last several years. So we just wanted to have a little chat and share with you some of the ways he's used both ozone and ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide to run a successful uh, business and uh, what it's, what's happened to him using the sanitization aspect over the odor removal business which had been his bread and butter during this pandemic that we've been experiencing uh, for the last uh, six months. So Eric, uh, can, would you mind sharing with the folks how you got into the business and, uh, and we'll go from there. I got into the business uh, at the end of 2016 and at the time I was in the car wash business and had purchased a unit that produced um, results with ozone and water that uh, when used in a vehicle within five to ten minutes you deodorize a car and you're good to go, they're, they're gone. And at that point I was look, started looking at the, all the different applications you could actually use for it. And, you know, the dollar per hour, you know, you can only do so many cars per hour. So, you know, all the different applications I was looking at that people with just ozone would use. Yes. Um, versus what me using the, that technology, uh, the basics of this, um, that, you know, there was more out there than just the... The guy with the ozone machines, you know, sticking them in an apartment for, you know, 36 hours or whatever, not having any idea what's going on. And that's, so that's kind of where... So you got started primarily with odor removal, correct? Yes. And um, what types of jobs have you done over the years? Have you done, um, you know, houses? Application-wise, I guess I, and I think each individual, wherever you are, not every application is going to work in your, you know, going to work in your location. You got to find the right niche that you're going to fit, because the the applications to use this are just they're, they're, there's a lot of them. So uh, where I've went is uh, I have done boats, boats, in Lake Erie. Okay. And that was because they can't, if you, you can't just use ozone with them because of all the rubber sure. inside and you know, eight hours of... So vapor hydrogen peroxide and ozone together works wonders in a boat. Absolutely. So what about, um, have you used it to, in homes? Homes, I did that. I, I still do that market. I get calls from realtors every week. Uh, set me up with their clients. I give them, a, you know, a realtor discount. And so, how did you get your first realtor client? You, I know you have a really nice website. Do you get most of your leads from the internet or yeah. word of mouth? How how did, how did you build your business? With the realtors, it was word of mouth. Uh, basically, I mean, in Ohio, uh, every Tuesday they all get together, and that's the way it is so you can be like a vendor and go in and talk to them I did that with one uh, realtor group and after that I just kind of let it go word of mouth because they all talk at open houses and such well a, a box of donuts at a realtors meeting goes a long way yeah I've always said that so that's how you got in you actually spoke before the group of realtors yes and then you did a job, and the results spoke for themselves. I actually did the uh, realtor's office. Well, you did the realtor's office. So they all uh, came in and uh, that next day and, uh, for the meeting, and we're like, wow. So they noticed a huge difference and decided to try your services commercially. 
right for their clients or yes. whatever their needs. Well, everyone knows space. that houses that smell Don't are sell. hard to sell. That's true. The same is true of cars and boats and, and tractor trailers and anything else, you know. So and now I've had quite a realtors call just because of people who are purchasing a house are you know high probability problems. So they it's worth worth it to them to have the house done and the HVAC and go in with a, a good sense of comfort. So you've done homes, you've done boats. What other types of projects? Have you done any kind of commercial work? I've, I've done commercial work for businesses. Yes. Um, and that was basically, that was deodorizing and sanitizing. Um, during COVID, I haven't dealt with businesses per se because if they're shut down, they don't need to be, and when they open, you know, it, it's a, you know, they have to go through their protocols, and they don't, they're all hurting money-wise, so, you know, that's, you, you, you can't make a living off of sanitizing, you know. So, you did land a very large account um, recently, and you were able to make quite a bit of money, and you did that doing some of your local government your county government uh, infrastructure? Correct. I, uh, it was a long, tedious process with them uh, because of the technology. It, it's not a EPA registration number, you know, on the end list. So there's a lot of people that just have, they're starting from zero knowledge or... or well, well hydrogen peroxide is on the end list. But the combination. Not, not, not just the raw chemical isn't. Yes. So just the product names. That and all the products on the end list, you now 90% of them, the active ingredients, hydrogen peroxide. So. Sure. But you, you, it was just, I mean, it was a couple months actually of. Getting them educated. Getting them educated to and, the point to where. And when you got them educated, the and you got such. passed. And they approved it. And that's where you're, you know, you're talking some, you know. And we're talking tens of thousands of dollars you're talking, worth of work. Yeah, you're doing 30,000 square foot facilities. So. And the, the technology performed, correct? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I do, and it's probably a little bit different than, than most out there, uh, especially ozone guys, or even uh, hydrogen whatever they're using um, I use ATP testing and it's a it's a good validation tool uh, you know you're before and you're after well that's one of the things I really liked about you when we first met several years ago is you you go the extra mile in terms of understanding the science and making sure that everything you do is done scientifically so you've used ozone meters for a long time and uh, you also have invested in the ATP meter to validate the efficacy of the technology. So I want to show you folks, this machine has been on during this entire interview. And you can see coming out of the machine, when we get this up, is this ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide. Now we don't have the ozone on right now, but you can see that vapor hydrogen peroxide going into the air. And so one of the things that Eric has done is he's tested the efficacy of just the ozone versus the ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide using the ATP meter. And then he has to validate for the county uh, the results that he's getting in order to be paid, correct? Correct. Yeah. And at that point, their uh, list and registration number kind of doesn't matter anymore because it's you know pretty much on contact that it's so when you did your first uh, ATP test with the vapor hydrogen peroxide ozone injected you told me you did a, a cell phone correct correct and uh, you want to explain to the folks what the results were of ozone alone versus ozone injected vapor hydrogen peroxide doing contact sanitization of cell phone surface. 
it went from um, not being touched and tested uh, very bad. It was over a thousand. Um, and then this is the meter reading on the luminometer. Correct. And with just ozone, um, it was in and around just above a hundred, I believe. And this is and this is just me, you know, grabbing the hose and just kind of, you know, holding it over, just you know, for probably five seconds. So we're talking seconds of application time, not minutes and not hours. Yeah, just a couple swirls on it, and uh, and I was pretty amazed at that. So you got a, a ninety percent reduction in essence. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, kick on the peroxide with it, and uh, it went to zero. Yeah. So you went which to is unmeasurable. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, and so and that was again five seconds. Yeah. So we're so talking about three swirls. True contact sanitization, um, just instantly, and that that's one of the or almost instantly, and that's one of the real benefits of combining um, the aggressive nature of vapor hydrogen peroxide, which has become the go-to technology in hospitals for really toxic things like Ebola and you know staff and flu things that they really need to sterilize and but many of those uh, treatments will take you know up to eight hours because they're getting built they have a chart based on different um, pathogens what the number of parts per million they need to achieve with the vapor hydrogen peroxide technology and we have a chart for ozone that we've uh, used over the years for how long it takes to kill various types of pathogens and as you know we provide almost 30 uh, independent peer-reviewed studies that you can download for your use uh, with just ozone but the two really when they are combined you have a cascade of what are called reactive oxygen species events and that means you're creating OH radicals which are hydroxyls you're creating H2O5s and long chain peroxides um, and that happens with just water vapor in ozone when you're starting out with vapor peroxide in the first place and then adding the aggressive O3 molecules there are a cascade of, of reactive oxygen species that get formed and they're all very aggressive at, at contact sanitizing and so you know when you shared your results with me I said I've got to get down and interview him because I know that not only is he making you know more money than many of our guys with one project but he's been able to take the technology and demonstrate in real time with the latest uh, e equipment and technology and you know ATP meters they're they're the standard of the industry for food service so if you're in a USDA organic uh, lab program, you know, a facility, ATP meter readings are taken if throughout the day. Tyson facility or whatever. Yeah, for poultry, for meat, and even for, you know, dairy and cheese. And ATP meters have become the industry's uh, go-to staple standard. And um, for any technology uh, to be that effective and then leave behind no residual poison, you know, that's what really sets us apart because when you turn off the machine the ozone reverts to oxygen and the hydrogen peroxide reverts to water so there are no toxic byproducts or residues that are left and, you know during this whole COVID epidemic folks we've had you know people fogging and wiping and spraying and sanitizing but the majority of products that they're using are are quaternary ammonias. I mean, for that's exactly the cleaner that the government. Yeah, and and so twenty years twenty years ago when I got into the mold business, quaternary ammonia is what I was using for mold remediation. And in my first six months, I had three women that developed a reaction to that exact product, and they were getting sick from it. And so what we've done now is we're requiring this massive sanitization of these high-touch surface areas 
daily and sometimes multiply periodicity during the day. They're, they're requiring that every hour these high touch areas get sanitized and carts and you know for quat to work it has to stay physically soaking wet for 10 minutes which most people aren't achieving. But when you especially after they wipe it, it's but when they do achieve it, the real problem is it's poisonous. You know, and so there no one is taking into account the buildup of these residues from all of these contact sanitizers that are being used in crazy volumes during the the pandemic. And so we I really feel that uh, you know Eric is a, a true pioneer in in using potent technologies that are proven to work and leave behind no toxic residues. And the one of the niches I'm, you know, with the government work I'm doing is, is you know, daycare. And with the daycare, you know, it's kids, things in their mouth, and, and that's Absolutely. highly important. And I, like, like I said before, I asked them what they were using as a daily cleaner, and they gave me the number, and you know exactly what it was, and that's what the, they clean because it, you know, the government says it's okay to do that, but then, you know, obviously this, it's and certainly purely organic. Some of the petrochemical sanitizers really do work. The problem is the residues that are left behind, you know. I never said that quats are, are not effective. It's just that they build up over time, and people have, can have a reaction to that. You know, early on, one of the studies that I found was something that showed that quat had been known to cause cancer in laboratory animals. Now, I can't find that study anymore, but back then, uh, Google uh, hadn't, or the universities hadn't locked up their, their peer-reviewed research. It was freely available with a simple search. This is before Google. But, uh, you know, it, it really helped me. It's how I ended up writing the country's first all-natural removal protocol, mold removal protocols, is coming to understand that the, the chemicals that are used industry-wide are, are potentially poisonous, you know, to people. So, so you've done commercial buildings, you've commercial, done... Commercial, institutional, residential... School, schools, you've said, done... In the daycares, you know, that's... And, and even, you know, with the offices, with, with this fog, you know, on a desk, you can... I can hold this there for 30 seconds. The paper is not going to get wet. You don't... But you know, after testing, that it's obviously... The germs there, are being it's, it's killed. It's there, yes, absolutely. Yes, and so, you know, that's the true benefit of a dry fog technology, is it isn't really dry, but at one to five microns, it's dry enough that it doesn't make paper obviously wet, but it's capable of sanitizing. And it's also highly humid outside right now too, which you're still you can still see that much, which is amazing. And in a dry environment, that would become the fog would be a lot more visible, correct? Absolutely. So, uh, so you've built your business by and large the old-fashioned way. You did a lot of uh, pavement pounding, a lot of handshaking and introductions, and then the word spread. Yes. Yeah, another application that I was in prior to COVID um, that, that I had to bring to a stop was dealing with people with autoimmune respiratory issues, asthma, or any, you know, in their home. Uh, and how did you reach out to them? Through their allergist? That's exactly where I was going to go with that. So you, you, t you talk to the doctors. Um, and there's the, the satisfaction I got out of those customers after going and doing their homes and you go in there and do all your air quality tests with another meter um, as he brings up often the meters, the ozone meter, the, all of them uh, you got to know your humidity that you're dealing with so I've always got something to measure my humidity temperature in the building, everything's about metering. Um, and that's what sets you apart from the hill jacks that buy an ozone machine on Amazon and think they can start a successful business. Right, because the, the machine they buy on Amazon, 
if they use the test, they're going to find out that it will never get to the PPMs needed. It just won't happen. That's right. So the, It'll dissipate before building any further. I mean, there's a ceiling it'll get to, and that's it. I mean, it it's a fraction of probably what it needs to be. Yeah, Eric has used our, our 100K uh, vertical tornadoes. He owns one of those, and he owns the Bio 3 VHP. And he's always been meticulous about documentation and proof. And to me, that is the result, the, you know, the earmark of a true pro, uh, a professional that cares about his clients and cares about the efficacy that's needed to run a successful business. And you're here on a beautiful home in a beautiful neighborhood. This is your only income stream? Yes. So you've been able to feed your family for almost five years now, since 2016. Uh, using the equipment and running the Bioshock business. It's been difficult. There, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I didn't have support. Nobody does. There's nobody's got a manual out there for sure. what goes on in the field and all the different things you run into. Um, and it's all trial and error and equipment problems, not yours. Yeah. My original unit was just an absolute nightmare and I had to replace every single component in that and ended up scrapping their got you know 70 pound stainless steel container it was in um, and uh, you know kind of rebuilding from there you know my own set but you know this, and this is it and more so it, it's, I'm so impressed by by the efficacy of what this thing, you know, puts out. Awesome. Here. It's, it's, and, and that I can't, and I've, any job I've ever had, I've never been able to sell a product or do something unless I personally believed in it and buy it, sell it to my parents, sure. something like that. And this was the same way because there was at times I got really skeptical about what I was doing. Yeah. And until I started testing and then finding out that I was, you know, overkilling and that, and that was causing other problems that I didn't even, you know, and it was it's just an ongoing learning process. So if you but, were going to start a new business, Eric, would the franchise model really bene have benefited you, do you think? That's what I said. I had zero support. So for, you know, almost five years, I have, you know, I'm surprised I have any hair left. I mean, because it was, uh, it was pretty desperate at times. I really didn't know where to turn. You helped me out uh, on, a, on a few occasions. That's how you and I became friends. And yeah. You know, I've, I've held the hands of a, nearly a thousand odor removal business owners over the years. And, you know, I have eight or nine uh, past employees that are running successful, you know, mold remediation companies. And I've really been a believer in the sanitizing aspect of our technology. And really it wasn't until COVID came to light that I decided it was finally time to launch OxyGreen Solutions, our new franchise. But, you know, in, our, in the conversations I've had with Eric and with some of my other people that have really had to struggle to learn to do things on their own from scratch, having a blueprint to follow and a support system really makes all the difference in the world in terms of success out of the box and not having to struggle. But now, the good news is, whether you're just gonna invest in the equipment like Eric did, or you wanna invest in the franchise with uh, five of the different money-making aspects uh, based around the core equipment, you, you still have uh, either path. One lets you be your own man and carve your own path and be a pioneer. The other one lets you follow uh, in the footsteps of people that have already been there. Good luck with uh, doing it on your own, though, because you better be real tenacious and be able to get by in some tough times here and there. Because without some, you know, it would have been worth. You know, I can't even put a price tag on it because honestly, I, I, I mean, I had my nose in Google for you know more hours than I could ever imagine over all these years and all the I had studies a, I've read and it's it's I had a mentor one time you're gonna love this Eric he told me Charles a pioneer carves his own path and he usually ends up being found on the trail face down 
in the mud with arrows sticking out of his back. And so for that reason, we decided to create the OxyGreen Solutions franchise model for folks to have a replicable, repeatable, uh, guaranteed way to make money using five different uh, modalities. And to not just scratch the surface with just odor removal or just sanitizing or, or just mold remediation or just crime scene cleanup or just the pest control aspects of the technology. But to have them all and to have an arsenal to be able to make money multiple ways so that during the uptimes and the downtime, there's a revenue model that will work for you to feed your family. But uh, I'm just so thrilled to see this machine actually working. You know, these are the ones that we started out building in our living room during the uh, COVID lockdown. I filed the patent uh, a couple years uh, previous, and, and Eric and I had talked about it at length. And so I'm just so pleased to see him being successful. Um, like a lot of my other business owners, it, it took a lot of hard work. And the other thing about this, it, it, the, the uh, weight of it's great because I, I, I have a Passat and I had to hit, get a special hitch made and have one of those wheelchair things on the back and I pushed that 150 pound Your thing previous there, my previous machine, yes. the stainless steel, you know, $14,000 machine and I can put this actually in the back seat of my Passat. So it's uh, very mobile. Awesome. Well, I just want to thank you for letting me come down to your beautiful home today. and.